Hi, this video is part two of my introduction to robotics for kids using MIT App Inventor. Again, I will use my programmable smartphone robot, Fritz. If you want to know how I built Fritz, I will give you a quick start guide at the end of the video. I covered all the basics about MIT App Inventor in my last video, so let's start right away into this video. For this video, we dive into automation and make our robot execute a sequence of moves. To make this a little more challenging, you can create a maze and challenge kids or students to solve it. A maze should have a starting point, an obstacle and a finish. So let's get coding. First, open the app we created in the last video and save it under a new name. Then delete all blocks from the block screen. We do not need them anymore. Also, delete the whole horizontal arrangement containing the switches. What we want is to get our robot make a sequence of moves one after the other. To do that, we need another component, the clock component. Find it under sensors and drag it anywhere, it will not be visible. The timer has three properties. Important to us is timer enabled, which controls when the timer starts. Tick that off. We want to control this with code blocks. The interval is something we will be changing with code blocks as well. You can leave 1000 milliseconds for now. The other property is not important for us. Before we start coding, change the color of the two text boxes to black. We do not want our robot to start driving right away. Let's go to the blocks screen. I want to start the sequence of moves by touching the robot's face. Go to canvas1, which is our robot's face, and find when canvas1 touched. Now let's start our timer by finding set clock 1 timer enabled 2. To enable it, you can use the true block under logic. Now we can find when clock 1 timer to define what should happen when the timer triggers. Imagine this as a stopwatch counting down a number of milliseconds defined in the timer interval. Every time the stopwatch rings, this code block gets triggered and the stopwatch starts again. We want to set the background colors of our text boxes when the timer triggers. My text boxes start black, so I change the colors to white to see a change. Let's test this. My app starts up, I touch the screen, and my text boxes switch to white after a while. If you want to try again, click Connect Refresh Companion Screen. By the way, it takes exactly one second for my text boxes to turn white. This is because of the timer interval that is set to 1000 milliseconds by default. Let's change this. You could change this in the properties, but we need to change this more than once, so we use code blocks. Use set clock 1 timer interval 2 and put it before the timer enabled block. Now find a number block and enter 3000. Let's test this little change with our robot. I touch him and after 3 seconds, our robot starts driving. By the way, you might think our text boxes change to white only once. In reality, our timer triggers every 3 seconds, setting the text boxes to white again. Now, let's tell the robot for how long we want to drive forward until the next change. Copy the set timer interval block to the timer event and set it to 6 seconds. This tells the timer to count down from 6 seconds for the next round. You might think we could do something like that. But that wouldn't work because all of this gets executed at once every time the timer triggers. So I put those two blocks to the side. What we need to do is to execute different blocks every time our timer gets triggered. Also, we want to be able to change the timer interval. We do this by introducing a step count variable and an if else statement. That way, depending on our step count variable, the if statement can execute different blocks whenever the timer triggers. So we introduce a variable that can hold a changing value with the initialize global name2 block. Let's start this variable with zero. Change the name to step count. Now we need an if then else block. As we learned in the last video, this block asks a question and depending on the answer, it is executing different blocks. Let's ask if our step count is zero. It will be zero at the start of the sequence. Again, we find this comparison under logic. Now fill in a get whatever block from variables and choose the step count variable from the dropdown. 
I copy the zero from here. Drag all blocks from under the if else statement to the then bracket. After all this, our code should still work the same as before. Let's test this. Great, it works. So to create more moves for our robot, we use this little cogwheel in our if statement. It can be used to add more cases or questions to our statement. We do this by adding a else if sub block to our if statement. I add two of them because that's what I will need. So now we can change the step count to one and add another case to our if statement to define what should happen the next time the timer gets triggered. To do that, first find set whatever to block and put it at the end of our first sequence. Change the variable name and put a one in here. Now the step count will be one once the robot starts driving and after six seconds, the timer event will trigger again and our if statement can do something else. So this is all about copying and little changes. Copy the comparison and change the number to one. Now I can use the code blocks from before. To turn right, I just make one text box black and one white. In case I chose the wrong one, I can change that later. Turning will not take that long, so I change the timer interval for this sequence to three seconds. The step count has to move on two, so I change it to two. Let's test this. This looks already quite promising. By the way, how far our robot turns depends on the timer interval you choose after setting the text box colors. Finding the right duration needs some trial and error. The best solution would be to use the smartphone's internal compass to make the robot turn exactly as you want. But that's a story for another video. If you don't want to miss new videos, subscribe to my channel. The next steps are just the repetition of what we learned, so I fast forward this. So let's look at the final code. After setting our step count to 3, I want my robot to stop. I always use the else bracket that doesn't ask a question to stop the robot at the end. That way, my robot will also stop when I have a logic problem in my code. In the else bracket, I also reset my step count to zero and I disable my timer with timer enabled being false. This is important to make the robot wait for my next input to start another round and not start over again on its own. Finally, test your robot solving the maze. To get everything right, play around with the timer interval values. And of course, you can add more moves to your sequence if you want. So that's it. To get started, check the links in the video description. In the next video in the series, I will show you how to make your robot talk and listen to voice commands. So if this is interesting to you, subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, leave a comment. And I share all my MIT App Inventor files on my Patreon page. So if you want to start right away with my apps, consider supporting my work on Patreon, where you will also find other cool stuff like my print templates for the light up obstacles. Finally, here is a quick start guide if you do not have a smartphone robot yet. First, follow the link in the description to go to my DIY smartphone robot page and order all the required components. I provide the exact links that I use on my website. I use DigiKey because you can get most materials there with a single shipping. If you haven't used DigiKey before, there's a checkout as guest option available. With the ordered parts, kids can start by building my easy robot first. It uses a simple paper circuit and it is already lots of fun to build so kids will have a fast feeling of success. If they want, they can upgrade their easy robot step by step with these different upgrades. Once kids are ready for more, they can create a new paper circuit and simply exchange the existing circuit on their robot. That will turn the easy robot into a smartphone robot. Again, all templates and instructions are free to access and I provide a test video for the smartphone robot that way kids can try out the robot right away without coding. Once that is done, kids can start programming the robot via MIT App Inventor. Oh, 
And if you already have components, my Patreon page might be interesting to you. I made a variation of my robot that uses typical Makerspace components like breadboards and standard DC motors. Instructions for this robot are available for my Patreon community. You will find a link to my Patreon page in the video description. So that's it. Have fun and see you next time.